Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, session that we have with special guests today with Isaac and Shannon. Uh, we're really excited to share with you um, some stories and a song. And uh, we're going to get started very shortly. So my name is Jody Williams, and I work at the school board as the Indigenous Education Lead. And I'm going to now turn it over to Shannon and Isaac, who will introduce themselves. And um, I also want to, if you're able to, in the chat box, you are more than welcome to put in any questions. Um, the, I'm sure the teacher can do that on your behalf for the classes that are watching. And I will help moderate those questions if you have any for Shannon and Isaac. So I'm going to turn it over to them now. And I'll be in the background. Over to you, Isaac. Okay, great. Okay, well, I definitely am happy to be here. And my name is Isaac Murdoch, and this is... Hi, I'm Shannon. And I'm going to introduce my name in the Ojibwe language, which is a native language. And it's a traditional greeting, which means that this is how we greet ourselves when we're at something special. And we're at something special today. And so I want to greet myself in this, the most special way I know, which is in our language. Ani buju, manzanab kinege go and abe, bam gija kandijna kaz, kinebe guksha bigaj wat and donja ba, kinoje and do dem. Anishinaabe and dao, that is. That's how, what that means is, hello, my name is the man who paints the rocks. And my other name is Revolving Sky. And I come from the place where the serpents are painted on the rocks. And I'm Ojibwe and I'm from the fish clan. Hmm. Uh, my name is Shannon Paul. And also my name is Bashkwanaquit. And that means the first thing cloud. And also my other name is uh, Ninga Biwanong. And that means the sunset. Beautiful. Actually, that name is really a good name. Your name's a really good name too. Wow, cool. So today we're going to do a little bit of stories, a little, little bit of singing. And Jody, are we with... <laughs> kindergartens yes you we have um it's their primary classes so anywhere between kindergarten grade one two and three well isn't this special so that's such a beautiful age to be and i remember when i was in kindergarten i remember that very clearly the very first day i was in school <laughs> Do you remember the first day you were in school? Yes, I remember. And I was <clears throat> I was crying so much I didn't want to go to school on the first day of class. Oh, really? Yeah. But you got used to it? I got used to it and I made friends. Did you like your teacher? I loved my teacher. Good. I hope you like your teacher too, kids. So I'm going to tell you a story. This story happened a long time ago and it's a real life story. It's not a make-believe story. And do you know what make-believe means? It means that it's not true. So this story is true. So when I say it's not make-believe, that means that it's real. This is a real story. And I want you to look up in the ceiling. So right over here, I'm gonna walk over here. And you see that? That's a canoe. It's on the ceiling on poles. And that's the canoe that I'm making for Jody. And it's going to be so nice when we're done it. I can't wait. And I'm going to tell you the story about the canoe and how it mm. came to be. A long time ago, there was this person whose name was Nana Bush. And Nana Bush is like half spirit half human and can shape shift and what shape shifting means is nanobush could turn into different animals 
or trees or rocks or clouds. And you know, like Maui, off that movie Moanda, that's how Nanabush is, like that. Kind of a trickster. Don't know if Nanabush is always telling the truth, but very powerful. And Nanabush couldn't have a have a wife. Every time he had tried to have a wife because he was always joking around so much, the wife would leave him because he was a trickster. And so you're not going to leave me, are you? No. Just don't play any more tricks. Okay, we won't play. <laughs> we won't play any more tricks. So anyway, Nana Bush couldn't find a wife because he was he was always playing tricks on everybody. So he went all the way to the west. And Shannon, what was your second name again? Uh, it's West Sun Woman. And how do you say it? Ninga Biwanong. Ninga Biwanong. And Ninga means West. And you know who's Nana Bush's dad? His name was Ningabung, which actually means the, the person of the West. So anyway, Nana Bush goes all the way to the West of the mountains. You know how there's mountains far away in the West, the Rocky Mountains? That's where Nana Bush went to go see his dad because he wanted to find out how can I get a wife because they all leave me because all I do is play tricks on everybody. And his dad told him, there's the only wife you're going to find is across the ocean in the east. You have to cross that ocean. So Nana Bush traveled to the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. They call that Gichi Gaming. That's what they call it, big water, big, big lake. So Nanabush got over there, but as soon as he got to that ocean, the serpents, the great big serpents, they all started splashing around. They were just waiting for him to come in the water because the serpents did not like Nanabush at all. And so Nanabush couldn't swim across the, the ocean to go find his wife over there. And so he sat there on a hill and all of a sudden, a beaver came to him. Just hold on. I'm going to show you what a beaver actually looks like. <laughs> Are you going to look for the beaver? I got the beaver right here. <laughs> wow, isn't that beautiful? This is a beaver hide. And... This is done in the traditional native way. It's smoked. But anyway, this beaver, right, came up to Nana Bush. All right, show them the face. Right here is the face. Can't really see the face, but there's a face on there. So the beaver said, Nana Bush, I know how to get you across that lake. I know how to get you there. Watch me. The beaver is so very smart. It's a construction animal. It knows how to make anything with wood. And so the beaver started to make the canoe. And the beaver made a birch bark canoe. That's how skilled a beaver is. Wow. Totally. And beaver made Nanabush a canoe. So Nanabush thought, well, how am I going to get across? Like if I put my arms in the water, then maybe the serpents will see me and they'll come and get me. So Nanabush thought about it and thought about it. And the beaver said, I know what to do. And carved him a paddle. You hold this beaver, Shannon. And I'm going to show you what a paddle looks like because you need to know what a paddle looks like. Yeah, this is so soft. <clears throat> so that's what that looks like. This is very, very nice. It's very, very shiny fur and it has some gold color on it. 
So this is the back of the beaver. Ta-da! So Nanabush made, or the beaver made Nanabush to paddle. So now Nanabush can paddle the canoe across the waters. The serpents won't know that it's him. And they won't attack him. And so Nanabush went all the way across into the east, found a wife, brought her all the way back to the North America, or Turtle Island, and he parked his canoe, not even a hundred kilometers from where I am right now. Yeah. That's pretty close. And so Nanabush was so happy that he was able to, you know, fall in love and find a wife and the wife really loved him. And all of a sudden Nanabush said, you know what, Beaver, you helped me so much. I'm going to do something for you. Grab the paddle, and he slapped that beaver right on the bum with the with the paddle. And you know what happened? All of a sudden, that beaver, it got a beaver tail. It never had a tail before. And now that beaver uses that tail to warn when there's dangers coming. So Nanabush said, from now on, you can use that tail to warn others when there's danger. And I'll give this to you as a present for helping me, of course, with the canoe and helping me get my beautiful wife. Wow. And that's the story of the canoe. Yes. And how do you say canoe in the language in Ojibwe? We say G-mon. 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 And it means like it's, it's, just skimming the water it's just touching the water hmm. it actually means like kissing but we can't kiss right now shannon no so the canoe when it just touches the water that's what it means that's what gmon means is yes. that right yes hmm. gmon g means low to the ground mon means like it means it's like kissing gmon it's low, it's low to the water and it's it's like kissing the water. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, so that's the name for the canoe. And the name for beaver is Mick. A Mick. A Mick. And a beaver hide, because it's a hide, they call it a Mickwayon. A Mickwayon. A Mikwayon. A Mikwayon. Yes. Does anybody have any questions about anything that I just said? The story? Maybe questions about the beaver or the canoe? Or maybe why the canoe is upside down? Yeah. Do we have any questions at all? <laughs> Teachers, do you have any questions? I'll let them, I'll let you know when it comes into the chat box, there's a, a bit of a, a time lag between when you're talking and what the kids are seeing. So just we'll give it a second. Um, there is a question coming. Okay. So teachers, yeah, if you want to just put your, put the questions in the chat box and I can ask on your behalf. If you want to just keep talking, I'll let you know when they come in. Okay, great. Well, maybe actually in, until we get a question, maybe Shannon can say a few words and I'm going to get a drum and Shannon can sing a song because Shannon's a singer mm -hmm. and Shannon's a very good singer. And so I'm going to go grab a drum. I'll be right back. Okay. Okie dokes. So um, I'm going to sing a song and I think I'm going to sing a song about uh, a woman singing and she sounds beautiful and the words are going to be in Ojibwe. And so that's the language that 
uh, we speak that we that we also heard growing up is Ojibwe. So you found me the big drum. Yes. Wait, can I tell them about this drum? Uh, this is a uh, buffalo hide and it's huge. It's a huge drum. It's big. And it's got like webbing in the back. Yeah. And Shannon gave me this drum. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. Yes. So Shannon. I just thought he was so big and tall, he needed a big drum like this. <clears throat> so we'll fix the chair. Are you going to try to sing along with me, Isaac? I might, yeah. Okay. I'll kind of just sit off to the side and see what happens. Okay. good Shannon yeah thanks for singing with me oh no problem Shannon is a much bigger singer than I am but sometimes I sing with her because that's so we what go... yeah that's what you, you do go ahead that's what we do, <laughs> so we, do. we have, so we have some questions yay <laughs> so the questions are well okay I'll I'll start with the first one. Uh, so is asking, what is the canoe made from? The canoe is made up of several materials. Um, and Shannon, can you explain what the canoe is, is made out of? And I'm actually gonna get some of the materials and show them. Okay, okay so the canoe is made of uh, birch bark. And it's the white tree. Ta-da! I think it's turned. This is the inside, right? Yeah. yeah. That's why it's brown. But here is the white part. That's from the white birch tree. Tree. Yeah. This is the birch bark from the white birch tree. Mm -hmm. And this is what definitely what the canoe is made out of. It's the main product of the canoe. And that's why they call it a birch bark canoe. <laughs> Uh, we call the birch bark uh, wigwas in Ojibwe, and uh, it takes, we have to go in the bush, uh, the forest, we call it the bush, and then we uh, peel the birch bark off, and so we have to harvest it in the summertime, and then we keep it safe in our house uh, until we're ready to use it. And that's the birch bark is like the skin of the canoe. So that's what that is made out of. And then to sew, to sew the birch bark, to sew it all up, we use roots. And these are the roots here. These are spruce roots. And a spruce root is, it's like Christmas tree roots. And we peel them, we split them in half, and that's what we sew with. But, and we had yeah. to get lots. We had to get lots. And it was pretty fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. 
What else is the canoe made out of? Uh, there's the roots, the birch bark. There's some wood. We have to. Yes. We need wood. There's wood. There's need... cedar. That make the ribs of the canoe, and there's sheathing, which is like, it's like little boards that go in the canoe to make it extra strong. I'll be right back. <laughs> Well, we need a variety of things. We need fire. Uh, we have to make a fire. Uh, we need a uh, sap from the tree. Uh, and then we need to split the wood and make sheathing. Um, we need rocks. We need big giant rocks. And we also need a shelter. So in case it rains that we could work under the shelter. And also with the the roots, we have to, if the roots are too thick, we have to split it in half. This here is something called sheathing and it sits in the canoe all the way around the canoe inside. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, and this is made out of cedar. Then this rib, that I made is gonna fit right into that canoe. And there's like 30 ribs that go boop, 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 all the way through the canoe. Why do they call it ribs? Because they're like ribs on a person. Hmm. And so, I don't know if you can see, but the ribs are gonna go in the canoe like that. They're gonna get tucked inside. They're gonna get tucked inside. But first, we got to put these on. Mm. And so I actually made 30 of these ribs for the canoe. Mm -hmm. 30 of them. <laughs> That's a lot of work, Isaac. In Simdana. <laughs> 30. In Simdana. That means 30. <laughs> What's the canoe good for, Shannon? Uh, well... Um, I can't wait to jump into this one if I can. Um, but it's good for a, a boat. We could go in there. Yeah. And you went in a lot of these growing up, right? Oh, yeah. The canoe is such a beautiful way of life. We use the canoe for everything, for traveling, to go visit to fish, to go hunting, to go pick our medicines, to just enjoy sunsets and sunrises, to get fresh air, and to be a beautiful part of all of creation. The mm -hmm. canoe is such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And special. I kind of feel bad because pretty soon this canoe is going to be leaving my home and it's going to go into Jody's house. And it's going to be Jody's canoe. <laughs> I wish. It's Have actually, fun, Jody. It's, yeah. It's actually, let's just clarify this. It's actually not my canoe. <laughs> Everyone's going to think that I'm getting a canoe. No, it's for a project that we're working on. And we're actually going to donate the canoe. Uh, to, yes, we're going to yes. donate the canoe. Yes, it's uh, part of a, another project. So uh, I would love to have the canoe personally, but that's... Uh, did I almost start a rumor? <laughs> Do you know yes. what rumors are? <laughs> yes. Rumors are when yeah. somebody says something that's not really true, and then people <laughs> say it over and over again, and everybody believes it, but it's not true. That's a rumor. And so the rumor today is that Jody's getting this canoe. She's not. The canoe is going to be donated to a, to a very special elder for the hard work and dedication that they do. Mm -hmm. So that's where the, what's going to happen to the canoe. Mm -hmm. So are you ready but for a couple good. more questions? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So the next question that's come up here is, why was Nana Bojo a trickster? Because his dad, his dad was the West Wind. And very, very, very tricky. But why? 
because that's how his dad was. His dad would swoop in and swoop out and was here and was gone. And, and that's where he got his mischievousness from was his dad. Sure wasn't from his mom. It was from his dad. And there's a lot of unknown things in the West. And Nanabuju carried all of those things, all those unknown powers and magics. And that's why Nanabuju was a trickster. He, he got it from his dad because his dad was like that too. Oh. So sometimes you can get the same traits as your parents. And what trait means is, I don't even know what it means. What does a trait mean? It's like if your dad or your mom is really funny, then you might carry that trait. You could be funny. Ah. Okay, I get it. So maybe I'm part Nanabuju. <laughs> Maybe I'm a maybe I'm a direct descendant of Nanabuju. <laughs> well, you sure look like Nanabuju. Am I really that handsome? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Well, yes. I'm, actually, I should. I don't want to start no rumors. <laughs> no, I'm not Nanabuju. That's, don't don't be starting good. no rumors. Well, good to clarify that. So another question that came up when you were talking about the story of how, of the beaver was, why did the beaver get hit on the bum? <laughs> that was because the beaver didn't have a tail. And so Nanabuju grabbed the paddle and slapped the beaver on the bum. A magical slap on the bum. <laughs> and once the, the paddle slapped the beaver on the bum, that's when the tail appeared because the beaver never had the tail before. And so it took a good a magic slap on the bum for the tail to appear. And that's why Nana Bush slapped the beaver on the bum was with the paddle was to give it the tail. And it's funny how a beaver tail actually looks like a paddle. Hmm. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question. It was a magical slap on the bum so that the beaver could get its tail. Yes. Okay. So the next question is for Shannon. Shannon, where did you learn how to sing? <laughs> um, I just kept practicing and practicing. And I just, um, I asked um, my friends who know how to sing to teach me. And I also learned from the elders who know songs. And yeah, so uh, I, I've been singing since I was a little girl, too. Wow. That's amazing. She's a really good singer. So how many <clears throat> songs do you know? Um, I lost count. Like, do you think you know, like, a million songs? Uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe 100 or 200. Wow, really? That's a lot of songs. But I might forget it and then I'll remember the next week and then I might forget it for a month and then I'll sing it later. Wow, that's impressive. Shannon knows possibly up to 200 songs. <sighs> but I don't uh, keep track of how many songs that I know, so I have to guess. Right. You like the Rolling Stones. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know who the Rolling Stones are? They have <laughs> no idea. They the probably, next question. <laughs> probably have no idea who the Rolling Stones are. Well, actually, sure. one of the questions that has come in, um, and I'm, I'm looking at the time, so we're going to kind of wrap it up soon. But one of the questions was, are you famous? And I think some hmm. of, one of the kids is asking that because the – one of the classes has been watching a lot of your videos, Isaac, from Lessons from the Earth and the Fisher story and seeing you um, on the video. And so, yeah. And maybe with all of Shannon singing, are you famous? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really famous, but, but I do go on some videos and stuff every once in a while. But Shannon <laughs> actually performed at the Junos. Oh That's like the most highest music festival award show in Canada. And Shannon was a singer at the Junos. 
tell yeah. us about it. Yeah, I sang there and but I mostly feel famous in my house. And I think Isaac is very, very um, well known. And so it, it seems like he's very famous. And he actually made a really funny video. And <laughs> <laughs> so he likes to do funny things. <laughs> yes. So yes. there's one so that's... last question um, that's come in and then maybe we'll kind of wrap things up for today. We, are, we will be um, with the kids again um, in the new year for a part two to this. So Yay. stay tuned. We'll all be back. Yay. But the question is back to the beaver. What does the beaver use his tail for now? Now that the beaver has a tail, what is it used for? Well, you'll see the beaver swimming. And all of a sudden, as soon as the beaver sees you, the beaver slaps its tail on the water. <laughs> Slap. Mm -hmm. And it makes a big splashing noise. And what that does is it warns all of the other beavers that possibly danger is in the area. And so it's, it's a danger device. It's like slap. All of a sudden, all the beavers know some danger is happening. And it's a very, it's a very good gift that Nana Buju gave the beaver because now the beaver can warn other beavers of danger. And that's why the beaver's tail is flat is it slaps the water and it warns all the other beavers that danger could be there. Hmm. It's, it's really a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nanabuji gave him the gift. Nanabuji gave beaver a gift and beaver gave Nanabuji a gift, which is the canoe. Mm -hmm. But those are all really amazing questions. And weren't they? Amazing. Those are like six, those are like grade six year old questions. Mm -hmm. Those are like, yeah, you guys are like really smart. Okay, so um, I guess we're gonna wrap things up. So we're just gonna sit, sing a quick little song to wish you good well and to wish you good well. To wish you good well. Does that even make sense? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to wish you good well. <laughs> to wish you good well. So. I only make sense half the time. Shannon makes sense most of the time. <laughs> so. Okay, what song are we gonna sing? Let's do two push-ups of the first. Okay. Maybe I should step back. <clears throat> Okay, so thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Jody, for asking us to be a part of the class. And keep safe. Keep listening to your parents and your teachers. And, and it, it was nice um, being here with you guys. And hopefully we'll see you soon. We will for part two of Nana Bush. <laughs> okay, see you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming today. We'll